hey it's Anastasia let's talk about things that I'm not gonna buy in 2024 wardrobe my first wardrobe resolution is try to not buy things that are not 100% for me something that is not like the best quality that I can afford something that is only temporary or like temporary fix as we go through life and we learn about our style I did a lot of experimentations and when I wanted to try a style of blazer that was slightly oversized because I didn't want to pay the full price for like a very high-end item I would settle for something that was from the high street or slightly more so I think I'm gonna stop those experimentations and try to build my style from within to go from what suits me and I think this is a good way to really learn a lot more about yourself and be more true to your uh, goals and values my first big a blog is fashion. I'm slightly biased as I work in this industry and I always need to make outfits to style for Instagram, for my reels, for YouTube and content and I'm trying to be very minimal with this so my rule of thumb is if you have something have one that is your favorite and the best and for variation for somebody like me when I want to show you a couple of variations I might have four of uh, the same item like a blazer and different shade or trousers but in the end of the day I don't think it really uh, helps me to explain things in a better way so my resolution for 2024 would be only choosing items that are 100% good for me because out of those four like blazers that I own uh, I think it's just one that I can call my favorite all of the other ones they have some something that I don't like about them could be the fabric could be the fit it could be slightly too experimental so uh, my take would be if I wanted to shop again I would be able to take out two of those items out of my wardrobe and merge them into one so instantly I would have less items and I would have something that I absolutely absolutely love but my resolution is not to set us on something that is not going to be 100%. Another shopping mistake that I realized over during my reflection time is that I kept quite too many items that I thought I would wear casually and I didn't end up wearing them or um, they were in a quality that was not 100% for me. So I have the system that I wear items that I love and when they are not in a top-notch condition, I can wear them more casually. So I'm I think I'm gonna rather stick to that, like this set of items, I was keeping them for special occasions and I realized that working from home you can also feel great wearing items that you already have. So wearing what you already have and wear your best items first because um, it's I know it's not a fair comparison, but I often compare a clothes shopping to grocery shopping. While groceries, they have a due date and they actually develop like bacteria and they're not good for us after a certain date. Uh, there is a problem with fashion items as well because fashion is designed in a way that everything doesn't last forever. So something that you bought is already a physical product and try to make use of it as much as you can as soon as you buy it and try to wear all of your best items immediately or like go to your wardrobe and just like pull the best items that you have don't save those for special occasions wear them and love them and use them and then if you will need an update you will know exactly what you want to look for what kind of fit what kind of fabric what you love and what you wear the most you know I live in a warm climate and I own so many jumpers and I own a lot of jackets but this is my style core like I wear the same denim and uh, same like tank tops or different tank tops uh, but same style or like t-shirts and then I will make different outfits using uh, top layers like jumpers or blazers or jackets and I honestly I have so so many of them so my resolution is really not to increase my collection even more you'll definitely see there's more than four in here something special something like neutral uh, to like a nice nice cashmere ones at least they are in my favorite color I really don't keep anything that's not my favorite color because when I see it especially every 
single day in my wardrobe, even if I don't wear it, I'm really bothered with it. So I try to reduce it. And something that I'm not gonna buy anymore are uh, pleasure items or things for fitness. And I will show you, I am just had it organized here that I have one, two, uh, three sports bras. They are all different colors. So this is only a thing that I want, I keep them. Sometimes I just keep all black. Honestly, no more than four for me. I think I'm good and no more a pleasure. I mean, how can you explain this? We always like reach out for our favorite color, which for me, I guess is a black, but I, I feel like I want to have all those options. I want to have a blue one and I love my khaki one and some of the other things. And I love to have like oh, this color of tank top, a bra top. And uh, I ended up with four caps. I think four is like my maximal limit. But honestly, what is this about us? Like we want to wear a perfect item that we have, but I think we also want to feel like we're not too limited and we have the option. The only way that I would buy another pair of leggings if it was more functional, like if it would have much better fit or maybe if it would have a functional pocket and this is what I'm looking for at the moment. But before that, I really need to use what I have. I'm gonna wear it every day or every time as I work out and as they wear out, I will uh, allow myself to replace them and I'll replace two items with one item. This way I will reduce my amount of things that I have. And in terms of pure fitness, I can't remember that when I was in my best ever shape, I had a lot of uh, fitness items. I think I was just stuck to my favorite like black leggings or like even like sporty pair of pants. And if I wanted to work out, it didn't matter to me to have those like new cool like shiny sneakers to start, to start working out more. You can use anything that you already have and you are already in your routine, then yes, a good pair of running trainers is something that could really help you and make you more comfortable and prevent you from injuries. I'm not saying that you don't have to have specialist items. But to start with, like if you use that as a motivation to start working out, it might be not the right motivation. I definitely have too many black t-shirts and I don't love wearing black t-shirts so I'm not gonna buy any more. On the contrary, I don't own enough uh, tops that are uh, even a flattering neckline. I figured that I was wearing tank tops but I was always using the neckline that was in a fashion and it was not best for me. So what I'm looking for uh, to improve my style this season is to find a perfect fitting uh, basic tops and tanks uh, to use as a base layer for all the jackets and blazers that I already have and therefore I have loads of new outfits without a big investment and without big change and things that are worn out are gonna go out of my wardrobe because if you don't have too many items and you wear them on repeat the process goes of you might need to replace them a bit quicker. Beauty and skincare. I realized that the less items I use on my skin, the better is my skin. And I have better understanding what those things do for my skin. And I used to have so many things that were the same, like one cleanser. I would have one cleanser, I would have two, one for everyday use, one for makeup removal, one for like deeper cleaning with a, like more harsh chemicals like salicylic. I'm really happy that I now have this little tray that keeps everything organized and whatever doesn't fit here um, I can understand that it's gonna be extra and I honestly think it's better to use uh, what you understand that works for your skin. I still have a couple of actives on skin that targeting some of my breakouts, for instance, or eye cream, but I'm not gonna buy any more stuff that I use at one time. And even whenever I travel, I don't really stock up. Like I wait for things to finish, then I go and I buy something when I'm completely finished of those things. Of course, I also do filming and I do have a lot of things that I only use for when I'm doing more professional makeup but they also I have a space limit of what can fit and although I really love some of the sets that were sold during Christmas like the hourglass palette I just understand that I'm not gonna fit it in here and 
I already have enough products to use on my eyes, on my skin, that I am not in a real need of that one. So only go for something that works for you. But at the same time, if something doesn't work for you, like some product that is not perfect, like a brow gel, if you haven't found your perfect one, or a foundation, I think you might want to test out to find something that works just for you. Same goes for your body care and shampoos. And I kind of tell you how happy I'm gonna be when I finish in this body uh, shower gel and the shampoo. And I really liked one big jar of something that we use every day. And I'm not really worried about like two special shampoos. I did that in the past, but now I find that when I wash my hair when I need it, so which is almost like every day or every other day, I don't need any special products to apply. Same goes for body lotions or oils. I recently realized that when I did my research that fragrances are really harmful for women because they disrupt hormones. So I really can't wait until I finish. And I really like to have small products. And when I f they finish, I'm just like really happy that I'm not going to be using them anymore. And I'll repurchase as needed. But honestly, try to not use uh, too many products with fragrances because they are really harmful to the female hormones. And I definitely not going to need a more hair products. I have these like, I think uh, this has been over a year and I think I will never be out of them. I don't think my hair is fizzy even. Something like this I use all the time and I even repurchase it when I travel for a long term. This is my favorite like a leave on spray for brushing hair and a volume spray. It's really three products that I use. I do have some uh, dry shampoo and I have some hairspray which I don't use a lot but I think you kind of need them so uh, that's the everything. Um, I don't need any more, that's for sure. Few things that I really should stop buying lipsticks. I can't remember when I used lipstick the last time. I think it was this idea in a woman's head that, oh, you're gonna wear something that will be full black and then you'll do a red lip. And I used to do that actually before. I did not do it since. And I, out of my lip product, I only really use my favorite lip oil that is Clarant. And this one is like very really nice and shiny and it's just the perfect color. Just wear your perfect color or have to Two, I think this is the max that I'm going to use. And eye products that are shadows and pencils and a couple of more here that I really, really love. This is probably my favorite. It just makes my eye pop. And this is new because I was targeted and I really wanted to try something from Victoria Beckham. Same as this one. I'm happy they're really, really small and they fit into a small storage. This one I bought over a year ago and they really never finished. So you can never finish your eyeshadows. So if you have huge palettes like I used to have in the past, it just doesn't work. I love eye pencils. They're so great. They're so versatile or like a little shadows that are just one tone. It's so much better work. So I definitely will not be buying any more eye products in the future in this year <laughs> but I have to tell you some of the colored eye pencils are just like must have they don't have to take too much room as well this was for Victoria Beckham one I used that over holidays to just like do like a pop of glitter and sequin and color and this one is my summer one that I use uh, to make a small blue line and it I think it looks fun and uh, as I said it doesn't take too much rooms so that's why I love having them fitness and wellness industry I really do love watching a lot of content by some fitness influencers and I think a lot of them are inspiring but I am worried about like being influenced by this industry so much because people think that everything is super healthy and it's really easy to be sold on all those products I'm not really sure that they work for me I used to be a client of many online coaches and also uh, tried personal training it's not something that works for me again then I don't want to stare at the screen and why I don't like going Going out to do exercises because I would spend time commuting and I don't always have the extra energy to spend like in a room full of people to also make social contact and try to have a nice conversation with them and the other thing it doesn't always like really help me achieve my body goals 
I know that I can work on things that I need to work on myself and achieve the same results. So having something like this is good to have at a home to start exercising. But honestly, you don't even have to. Some of the weights are useful to have. I'm glad I have them, but you can also use your own weight or you can use water bottles. Just use what you have to start with your fitness journey. If you're more advanced in fitness, honestly, I don't find that home exercises are actually doing anything. So for me, only like weight training at the gym actually makes difference and I feel so much stronger after I have incorporated it almost daily or like twice weekly basis in my routine. Another reason why fitness and wellness industry bothers me a bit because I think it makes it a very easy to sell to those people who want to be healthy and I'm one of those people who always led a healthy lifestyle and want to do best for your body. The problem that I see with it that it's an easy way for some uh, dodgy chemical products to come into our lifestyle and I just blindly trust all the ingredients that are included in those like fitness and wellness items while I'm gonna be very very uh, careful about eating something that doesn't have the right ingredients and those things I'm not saying that they are harmful but there's just not enough research and after researching more ultra processed foods I realized that some of the products that are used in a fitness and wellness industry could be waste products from the dairy industry like the whey protein for instance. This industry is really profitable for people who work in there and create those brands. So I'm sorry, I don't really want to support you. I'd rather support a food production like whole food production and farmers who actually work on the land and create and grow something healthy. A lot of those fitness products also include sweetness and flavorings that are not good for our body. And and they uh, will uh, affect like your taste buds and sweetness, even if it's not sugar, is also affecting uh, in many ways your taste buds and your blood sugar can actually spike, which is not something that you want to do. So if you want to have more collagen, you should go and get some really good quality chicken and bones and get a broth that would have really good collagen or something really unflavored. But convenience foods, although if they are like fitness and wellness foods, are I'm not sure they're gonna be good uh, for everybody. Definitely it's my choice, it's up to you, but I want to avoid them as much as possible. I would much rather spend extra money buying really good quality foods that are whole, they are fresh, and I will nurture my body with them without being a convenience factor. Also, you don't have to really eat all the time, like those people who eat protein bars. It's like a candy. We really cannot have so many protein bars. It's it's, it's not good for you. My next big block is food. Things that I definitely don't buy are coffee capsules because I intentionally bought the machine that grinds fresh beans. This is a local supplier that is just here and they don't have to deliver it. I go there and pick them up and bean goes into the machine and gives you a perfect nicely fresh brewed coffee. You don't have to waste things. If we would have a garden, we'd probably recycle those coffee grounds for like plants or in our compost bin. At the moment we don't have it here but to have a really good coffee at home, fresh beans, good quality filtered water, good coffee machine. It does need a bit more maintenance than I, I guess other machines that are capsule but definitely a lot less wasteful. Water. We try not, we never buy bottled water for home. We install the filter, it's purifying the water under the sink. Then we recycle bottles from some, something that we had to chill water in a fridge and it's most beautiful purified clean water from the glass. It tastes like 100% better than from plastic. Another food thing that I'm gonna stop buying this year and I already stopped, plant milks. They also worry me with the amount of ingredients in them. A lot of them have seed oils in them, sugars, sweetness. It's not a wholesome product and honestly real coffee, just Americana, tastes so much better. Or like if I want to have some milk, I'm just gonna have whole dairy milk. Also I'll have less to waste. I was really bothered by, you know, when this plant 
milk is half finished but you had it for a week or so and it starts becoming like a jelly and then you have to get rid of it you need to get, uh, discard it in a sink and I was looking at it like oh my god why am I putting this thing in my body everything's not real food uh, could do more damage than good I'm sorry about uh, saying this but this is true same with the seed oils something that I'm not gonna buy anymore we have to finish what we have seed oils I'm coming from Ukraine and you know we grow a lot of this sunflower oil and yeah if there's no better option sunflower I think it's the least worse but the problem with them that oils go rancid and they have to be treated with chemicals again to get rid of potential like harmful things and not to be you know spoiled on the way to it's like exported destination in Ukraine uh, we buy a lot of the cold pressed and raw sunflower oil which is amazing and it's fresh when the oil is fresh it's fine to have it it's not as harmful seed oil because it is not like it didn't go rancid yet otherwise it's much better to use a ghee butter and even like lard or tallow for cooking your food if you really can't use those uh, use olive oil I never believed that seed oils are bad for us but after trying it out cutting out for months I think um, it's done really good to my health home decor another thing I'm not buying for the house a house decor I've been blogging for many years now and I see how these trends they change almost every couple of years and there's no point in investing in something that is a cheap decoration that will go out of style that's why I stick to something really neutral and I love using organic like plants or dry plants I have a couple of them in my house they always look amazing and if uh, you want to change it up you just go to the shop and you buy some fresh flowers they look gorgeous they're not bad for the environment they're not bad for your kids or for your health I can't say we ever bought cheap furniture uh, it's definitely uh, up to you we do have a lot of IKEA items that are not so cheap like the couches that we have are IKEA but I have to keep them fresh by doing upholstery to them so keeping something good quality and doing the maintenance that needed is what everything that you need to do to have good furniture in your house the only decor I actually buy are candle holders like this one here and you can see that it broke but I actually managed to repair it with a special Kintsugusi kit from uh, Amazon I think I might be saying it wrong but now it has more special characters I find that candles and some fresh uh, plants or decorations they are just what you need to decorate your house one of the cheapest ways to easily decorate your house is to get some posters some of the neutral shade posters are actually could be fun I got some from Desenia and there's a lot of other websites out there available if you know what colors you like you can invest in making some art there's a lot of artists who can make art on commission just give them references of what you like and something like this is very neutral it's something that I use as a backdrop for making photos and it's the colors that were inspired by a really really old painting from 300 years ago so they will probably not go out of the trend like the modern pieces another thing what I don't want to buy anymore for a house are cheap cushions and decor cushions I tried so many of them all over the years the cheapest ones they always look terrible the ones that I have now they're from West almond pottery barn they are my favorite for now but as I think they actually not super essential so for me I just sometimes swap colors of the cushions I don't have any special like Christmas or seasonal one but with the change of seasons I just like to change maybe from the warm tone to the cold tone that's why I like having neutral furniture that will accommodate both art could also be functional and it doesn't have to be super complicated like this art piece is covering the utility cupboard and this is something that I 
made yes it was together with a friend who is an artist but I just wanted what colors I wanted to put on my painting I knew the amount of color that I want to get and this has a special significance to me as it's a picture of the region that I'm from in Ukraine and whenever I see it every single day it makes me really really happy another great way to decorate your house is to have beautiful books and meaningful objects the one we have we had them for years and I, I didn't like them at first as they seemed as a non-trendy to me maybe five or seven years ago but I'm happy my husband picked uh, these objects because they would and I think they're gonna be timeless and they're super meaningful to us my other favorite way to decorate is with books and I buy some books that look good and that also are useful so my favorite are the cookbooks or business books that I already read for any new book that I'm researching I have to first read it on a Kindle app and Audible listen to it and then if it's really useful I'm gonna go and pay for it and have it in my house I have a special place in my heart always for beautifully made and useful cookbooks as I always like to use them as a reference instead of uh, grabbing a phone or laptop to find the recipe I really like to have something handy and uh, a great collection of books for the house is always best to also educate your kids I also find that my kids love browsing them and they are more likely to try new food if they saw it in a book I also don't know why but I really love those type of books because they are giving you a feeling of a good home I cannot say that it's super useful to have them but it's something that makes house a home and the last thing in my list are luxury purchases that we have to make accommodations for and that's why I think we actually need to really think about those wish lists that people now create I think they could create more harm than good because as you see the item you try to explain to yourself that you will accommodate your needs to have that item in your uh, wardrobe or in your house like for me I had uh, something really small and uh, it's a designer item and it's a luxury purchase that I've made and now I have to think about ways to accommodate it in my life I do did love how it looks and we tend to buy things because we like how they look other aspirational things and not necessarily something that is functional for us for me a functional item uh, of luxury is something that looks gorgeous but it actually does really good job at holding things that you need to hold and does all of those things in a really beautiful and nice way in a way that you don't have to compromise your ways and you don't have to adjust yourself to that luxury item I think if you have to adjust too much it's no longer a luxury it's you being a slave to that luxury item and you don't feel good about it this is what has happened to me that's why I find that a lot of the things that I used to be aspired to as a personal shopper in luxury segment I see how women change their ways in terms of what things and what the brands they go for and another thing about wish lists I noticed that I would put things on my wish list that would totally not relate to my needs this would be just something that this little extra that I might have had uh, and I only would think about it because I saw it somewhere uh, because I was researching the topic and it is really harmful to even like go to websites if you want to reduce your shopping don't go to the shops because things get in your head uh, or like don't write them down like if they not if you don't think about them because the more you think about it the more I think you persuade yourself that you could actually accommodate that item in your wardrobe like you don't think that you need milk right in your fridge or you don't think that you need a fridge you just go and buy it and if you think about like if I have it in my life uh, well uh, you might not <laughs> uh, this is my take for today I know that luxury items are different and if you want to know more about uh, style and luxury items subscribe to this channel and my other channel with the personal shopping content and I hope this was useful please support me give me a thumbs up and please let me know what are you not gonna be buying in 2024 write me in a comment and I'm gonna see you in my next one